Have you heard of the phrase multi-passionate? The first time I heard it was from the business coach Marie Forleo to describe entrepreneurs who have a lot of different skills and interests and passions. It's also a great way to describe many of the artists I know. In fact, one of the common blocks I experience is not running out of ideas. It's having too many ideas and getting paralyzed with indecision and overwhelm. That's the nature of creativity and curiosity. Ideas tend to lead to more ideas. I lie awake and think, I wonder what would happen if... With all these ideas, I easily get overwhelmed. When I have a number of ideas and no clear direction, it's more likely that I will take no action and be completely blocked. As my granny says, you can't ride two horses with one butt. Or in my case, I want to ride a whole herd of horses that are all running in different directions. When you say yes to one thing, you necessarily say no to other things. Ultimately, I found that being definitive about my yes is the answer to this pesky block of too many ideas. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how important it is to pick a path and say no to other options. Welcome to The Josie Show, where it's artist to artist chat about making art and selling art, because I think artists should get paid. If you want to learn the steps I took from going from an artist slash waitress to a full-time artist with a thriving art studio, I wrote a guide for you. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Selling Your Art Online. You can download it for free at josielewis.com slash ultimate. So here's something that's true about artists and me in particular. I am endlessly inspired by all sorts of things. I'm inspired by the natural world. I'm inspired by interior design. I am inspired by the color palette in my daughter's favorite cartoon show. And I'm inspired by interesting uses of materials and concepts in my books and my Pinterest boards. And I wanna make art about everything. I wanna learn how to blow glass and weave macrame and create digital art and throw pots and make gouache mandalas. But here's something I've learned. When I say yes to too many things, I end up with a meh to everything. Which is to say, if I hop around to many different expressions, I may have an enjoyable time learning, but the results of my efforts will be basic and sophomoric. Excellence and developing craft takes a while and requires going deep, not wide. So just like sitting down to read one book, I have to talk to my flock of ideas and I say, I'm sorry, but I can only work with one of you this month. A niche isn't jail, but developing a series in one category necessarily requires saying no to other possibilities. Sometimes that can feel heartless. Sometimes that can feel too much like discipline and artists want to be free. Here's some tough talk from Josie. What it actually is, is maturity and growth as an artist. A few years ago, I was writing a book about color and I decided to create a project around rules. The project was this. I would work in watercolor and I was limited to square watercolor paper that was five by five inches. I could only use one color. I chose phthalo blue, green shade, if you want to know. I chose one shape, circles. For the first couple of paintings, I thought I had made a mistake. I did not have any ideas. I missed the rainbow and I was bored. But I had committed to making 20 of these paintings for this project in the book, so I forged on. And slowly, but picking up steam, the ideas came. Ultimately, I made 50 paintings and I still return to this exercise for compositional and technique ideas. Maybe I'll do it again, but with purple. I often think of this as a journey of flow and deliberate practice. When I'm learning a new medium, say knitting, the difficulty level is high because I'm not a knitter. Everything feels awkward and uncertain. I don't have any muscle memory. My results reflect my low experience levels. It's very hard to think of new creative ideas when I'm just learning how to knit one purl two or however it goes. 
As my competence grows, however, the difficulty of deliberate practice subsides and I'm able to find my flow, which is that sweet spot of a modest amount of challenge mixed with clear goals and progress. In flow, creativity really expands. Technical mastery gets burnt into our nerve sequences. We begin to develop our voice. What is a unique voice, you ask? An artist has a unique voice when their art looks like their art. Their mom or their best friend could pick it out of a lineup. The work is no longer derivative or clumsy. Most beginning artists start off by copying strong and powerful voices. That's part of the artistic process. And that's what I mean by the term derivative. As a young artist, I made art a lot like my painter father, and then I made art a lot like my college professors. But maturity as an artist means cutting your own path and making art that's yours. Ultimately, you will end up with habitual colors, marks, style, and content. That doesn't mean you can't shift and change and develop. You can and you will. In a rich and exciting lifetime of art making, there may be a time when you know the only way you can express what you want to express is to learn how to do bronze pouring. It will be worth the time and worth the expense it will take to learn a new process. But as you mature as an artist, most of the time it will require saying no to fanciful ideas. And when you say yes, to bronze pouring, you will know how to count the cost. So what are you saying yes to? Where do you find your flow in the yes? Do you get overwhelmed with all the ideas like me? Do you have other ways that you figured out to solve these problems? Let me know in the comments. And as ever, if you find my content helpful, a subscribe, a review, a follow, all of those things can be incredibly helpful. Have a great day.